So I'm very proud to introduce in this segment our use from 2017, which is the year I used the naming convention of characters from Game of Thrones. So the first you I want to introduce is Gilly. Gilly is a beautiful, even-tempered, lovely fawn cat mugget. She's got a lovely fleece. She is out of Nitro and Treviso, and Treviso was um, a beautiful, really, really fine you. She was one of the first products of our foray into br breeding for fine flea Shetlands. Uh, Gilly is Alice Paul's mother, and Alice Paul is a, definitely an improvement on Gilly, even though Gilly is spectacular. Um, she's just a full package, great mother, very nice temperament, and I'm going to take a quick look at her fleece here. Loving that she's got the coat. Lovely cramp. Good fineness. I'll put her micron numbers up here on the screen. She's ruined a little bit. <laughs> um, so this, last year, Gilly's fleece, I sheared her and I took her wool and I broke it up into one ounce packets for people that wanted to try raw fiber from our soft Shetlands but didn't want to invest in an entire fleece just because I felt like her wool is a really good representation of what you get from our flock. So that's Gilly. This is Brienne of Tarth. We call her Brienne for short. She is a Moret Smurzlet U. And Smurzlet is this marking. In horses, they call this a blaze. In, in uh, Shetlands, if they have a white forehead and a white nose, whether or not it's connected, it's called Smurzlet. And she is very regal. I just really like her look and I will comment for my friend Hannah that she has the kissy lips so we always know her because she looks like she just dipped her mouth in some hot chocolate. I rued her last year and it was it was a really nice fleece. I probably will shear her this year though because she didn't really like the experience. Um, she was bred this year. I don't remember who I bred her to. She is out of Elizabeth Bennett and Nitro. So both of those were brown sheep. So that explains why we got a brown based shoe. So let's take a look at Brienne's beautiful fleece. So nice and clean. Kind of a lighter, more color. She's kind of turning lighter as she gets older. Very pretty. I'm just going to do her feet now. Okay. Um, I don't have any lambs in the flock right now out of Brienne. Brienne has been a ram producer. <clears throat> so hopefully this year she'll give us a beautiful ewe. So this is Mira Reed. She's a fawn cat mugget. She's got a beautiful fleece. They all have a beautiful fleece. But it's just like your kids. They're so special, each one of them. You just, every time you're focused on that one, it seems like that's your particular favorite. Um, She's a fawn cat mugget. She's out of Mustang Sally, who was a solid brown ewe, and Mr. Darcy, who was a gray cat mugget. So that's an interesting pairing that she has the brown base from her mother, but the cat mugget pattern from her father. So just a interesting diversion on the genetics there. Um, she gave us a really pretty Fawn Cat Mug at you and a ram. I can't remember the ram last year. He was more it, I believe. We're going to take a quick look at her fleece. The best part. <laughs> her fleece is lighter. It's a lighter gray or fawn cat mug. In. And that's a good thing. You can use this fiber for dyeing, almost like you would with a white fleece. Like I said, a really nice length. All right, let's take a look at her feet. This is Aria. She's out of Genoa and Nitro. She's solid black. 
and she was a triplet. She was our only triplet we've ever had. So it was Aria, Sansa, and Oberyn. And um, Aria was really small, but she's caught up to everybody else really well. Beautiful black ewe. We bred her last year. She gave us a really flashy uh, ram, which this year hopefully she gives us a flashy ewe because he was really pretty. So let's take a look at her gorgeous fleece. She's a solid black. And the coats went on kind of early this year, so we're not going to have as much bleaching from the sun. I can already feel this is really soft. Oh, that's nice. A nice black fleece. Nice and crimpy and fine. It's really soft. Beautiful handle and very um, dense. There's a lot of wool there. So during the cold winter months, we're faced with certain obstacles when it comes time to taking care of the animals. The cold, uh, the short days, and the icy conditions. Just to add an extra challenge, and um, what I wanted to do in this segment was just show you some of the tools and equipment that I use to overcome these obstacles. And by no means am I a product endorser, but I found some things that really work well and I just thought I would share those with you. Before I have to go out and do chores, I put the hat and the cowl on in the house. And I always have these two. They, I tend to kind of keep the same things, wear the same things out in the barn because they attach an odor and I don't want to get everything stinky. <laughs> so, so this is the hat, this is the cowl. And I always dress fairly light as my first layer, so typically leggings, a t-shirt. I happen to have on this fleece today just because I like the pockets, but it's very light. and. Typically, I'll wear my insulated socks. All of my winter gear for the barn is out here in the garage. I don't have an intermediary room that's heated that I can put all of my gear. So the quicker I can get everything off and on, the better. Okay, so the next thing that goes on are my coveralls. These coveralls are very special. Rich bought these for me for Christmas two years ago. They're Carhartts. They're made for women. They're insulated. I just, I just want to say that if you're in the market for outdoor gear, I highly, highly recommend this setup. I'm not a Carhartt dealer or anything like that, but it's just, I've started to become very brand loyal to the Carhartt out, outer gear. So these are their coveralls. They have suspenders. I finally learned, I was, was not doing this initially, but I learned that it's best to cross them. They stay on better. So the clip comes up through here and around. It's a canvas material, but somehow they've made it very lightweight. Like I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm outside in just a pair of leggings. Very comfortable. Excellent zippers up both sides, and the zippers have never gotten stuck. They just slide like butter. The other thing I love about this set is the pockets. There's pockets everywhere. Some of them do not have zippers. Some do have zippers. So sometimes you want a zipper, sometimes you don't. For example, there's a handy pocket here. This is where I put my clippers for cutting the binder twine. If I had to unzip that, it would be a big hassle. This is sort of like a temporary holding pocket. So real handy. Even like the back pocket, there's a detail here. One pocket's open, one has a little flap over top of it. Just, and I've actually, as I've used this kit, I have started to tailor it so that every pocket is used to hold something. So here's where my phone goes so I can zip it up so it doesn't fall in the snowbank. Um, the other thing about this is the length is perfect for me. So they do have a nice variety of sizes. And I don't know, I just feel like I can really move around in this. There are gonna be times when I'm doing chores outside like cleaning the barn and I get overheated when I have the coat on and I will actually just work in this and be very comfortable because it does provide warmth for the core. So with the coveralls, I also got the jacket. This is a medium jacket, also insulated, also loaded with awesome details. Easy start zipper, zips up without any, that's like the best thing. I've, I can't stand coats where you have to fiddle, fiddle, fiddle to get the zipper to go. These pockets are already loaded with stuff. I got batteries, 
I got a broken clip that I can't bear to throw away because I'm sure I'll find a use for it later. There's pockets here. I mean, there's probably pockets in this thing I haven't even found yet. Um, there is a hood, which is handy. So like normally I'll go out just like this because the hat is awesome. But if it's raining, the hood is great just to keep my head dry. And also if there's a lot of wind, I, I like to put the hood up, but typically the hood stays down. So yeah, and this is just another awesome little detail. So the cuff, there's a, a ribbed cuff, but then they have this, it's almost like an extended piece of fabric here. And this is so handy. So it prevents hay and stuff from getting back up in the cuffs. I don't know how they figured out that detail, but it works. So, so that's the outer layer. I wear these mittens. These are suede with a fleece lining. These are what I use to do chores because if I wear gloves, my fingertips get really cold and numb. And that's probably because I've ruined my hands from flick carding <laughs> all my fleeces. Um, it does kind of present a problem because sometimes I feel like I'm trying to do things with a pair of oven mitts on. But if I'm doing something intricate, I can quickly take my hand out and do what I need to do. And then I put them back on. My hands are already starting to get toasted up. If it's really cold or maybe the last time I was wearing the gloves, they got wet. I keep a hand dryer right here in my little glove storage area that I will just give them a real quick hit of heat just to kind of, yeah, just to kind of get them a little bit nicer and warmer and dry them out. So the last thing I want to talk about are the boots. So boots are critically important and I have a variety of boots for different times of the year, but these are the ones I wear wherever we're in the midst of winter months when it's cold and slushy or, you know, you really actually never know what you're going to get weather-wise. So what I like about these boots, the rich bought these for me for Christmas. They are called Boggs is the brand. I've never seen them before, but he found them and I love them. There's a couple things I love. Number one is they have a faux fur lining, which is nice and warm. And it's so great because my feet slide right in. It's not difficult to put the boots on. They do have a lace up and a really good waterproof section. And the best part are these holes on the side. This is what I use to tug them on. Super handy. And like I said before, getting things on quickly in the cold weather out here in the garage is key because once I've got everything on, I'm as warm as toast. So just love these boots. I'm, um, I really love the holes. It really helps me to pull the boots on really quickly and easily. Another tool that I use, not frequently, but every so often comes greatly in handy are my goggles. So these are my ski goggles, but there are days when you have to go out and feed the sheep and the wind is whipping at 30 miles an hour and it's cold and it's so harsh that I can't see. My eyes start to water um, and it's just really difficult to see. So I wear the goggles both so that it makes it easier for me to see and also to protect my eyes. So when I'm doing the chores in the evening, in the winter, it's dark. And the reason for that is I feed them after five. I don't wanna feed them too early because then there's too big of a gap between the evening feeding and the morning feeding. Recently sourced this headlamp and we've had a bunch of different headlamps, but this particular one seems to work really well. It's got a USB charger on it. The lights are LED and it has five different settings where you can have just the center lamp, just the outer four, all five. There's also a flasher. It's hard to do with these oven mitt gloves. And I also like the light because it makes a really cool image when I'm going out to the barn at first and the sheep are all standing outside waiting for me. You can sort of see the lights of their eyes it reflects and it's really pretty and it's all different colors and um, it sort of reminds me of flying into a city just these beautiful lights in the darkness so it's a very cool effect that I enjoy so on the head we've got the light the hat the goggles the cowl on our shoulders we've got the coat on our knees, we've got the coveralls, my handy boots, my insulated socks, my oven mitt leather mittens. I use this sled um, to transport water and 
hay, because I have pens that are pretty far apart. The ram pens are pretty much at the op opposing sides of the property. And when there is snow or ice and there's a good pack of it, this the sled is really terrific, makes the job really easy. So it's actually the plastic sled that my boys used when they were little and I just repurposed it for use in the barn. And it is a huge energy saver. I mean, I just, it just doesn't take much effort at all to move big buckets of heavy water and large bales of hay. So my sled. So this, this is the water source for the barn the hydrant we have a electric wrap that goes around the entire base and that prevents it from freezing so when the power goes out we have to put the generator to this first and foremost especially in the cold weather but having that electric wrap has been a really big help in the colder weather Okay hey guys, some nice clean water. As soon as it's light enough that I can lift it over. I put it like that because then I don't spill it as much. How's that? So we have the bucket set up in the winter time, these electric buckets in every pen. So there's two ram pens right now. And then I have, um, there's three buckets in with the U's. And at breeding time, we had them set up as well. So there was even more buckets. And each one of them is set up the same way where we elevate the um, connection from the ground so the water doesn't get in there and short out the buckets. Is that good? I'll have to bring over some more. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> you guys, so cute, aren't they? <laughs> I always feel bad that I can't give them attention and stuff. I'm down here in the wool cave and I wanted to give you an update on some of the projects that I've been working on. The first thing I want to talk to you about is I am working on my bag of scrap wool, which I've talked to you about before. So this is just stuff that I had discarded in the past thinking that it wasn't really usable, but now that I'm out of wool, I'm working my way through it. What I'm trying to do is get enough fiber to make another three ounce skein of self-striping yarn. And this is this is a my styrofoam wine delivery container that made me stop getting wine delivery because I hated this. So I'm using it for this purpose is this is how I separate out my colors for my self-striping yarns. I also use it for fractal or gradient yarns, but so what I have is black a different color black, like a dark, dark gray, a lighter gray, fawn, moritz, and white. So I'm, as I go through the bag and find bits of wool that are either flicking waste or locks that I didn't want to flick, I'm running them through my Magicraft mini combs. And I'm finding that what that does is that it opens it up and lines up the fibers for me because I am spinning this self-striping yarn as a worsted where all the fibers are in a line um, and it's also working to clean it a lot more effectively because of the form that it's in than it would be with a flick lock so I'm just gonna take this one off I'll work on this one later so I'm just working it just as the colors come up in the bag now some of them if they're um, So like this one here, it's a really tightly coiled little patch of gray locks. I have another container and I'm collecting those and those I'll be using for my lambs. So right now I've got gray, 
and more it collected. I don't know why I don't have very much of the other colors. It's kind of strange. So here's some. This, you know, I try to keep it in the same color family. No, I'm not going to use that. I'll probably use that later, but for now I want something. Ah, here's a nice little patch of gray locks that I thought were too, too something for me to flick. I'm going to load these on my combs. And this one, it just so happens, I don't I have no idea why that didn't make the cut. That looks perfectly nice to me. So I'm going to load this base of the lock towards the back of the combs. So the tips are going to be out here where I can see them. Load up a couple more. This is called lashing. So the Magic Craft Mini Comb set has got a clamp, a table clamp, and a little a base that you can use. I still like to keep my hand on the comb while I'm doing this, and I don't know, I just, I like to do that. And I don't use like any kind of sprays or anything. If it's getting staticky, I'll just put my hand down to smooth it. I'll show you what I mean. I also, for some reason, I don't know why, but I put my thumb on the combs here. I don't go really fast, so I'm not really at risk of injuring myself. At least I haven't so far. You just look at this and I just can't get over the fact that I was throwing this stuff away. The nice thing about the Magicraft mini combs is they're not really sharp. Those tips are fairly dull. I mean they do the job but they're not as they're not as treacherous as some of the other ones. So then this is the waste that I end up with from this. I have, sometimes I'll just pull this lo little loose bit here and then throw that in. I mean, it's so m minimal, probably won't even be a, put a dent in the bucket. And then I put that waste in this little bin and this is what's gonna go into the quilt bat pile. All right, so what I do now, I don't like to pull it off in, um, you know, like with a diz. What I like to do is remove it completely and then I will flick it. So I'm going to use my flicker, my flicker brush. So I pull it off there. It's got a lot of the neps and the waste and everything there at the end. I'm just going to flick that off with my brush. It is. Nice length on this one. It's not It's not as soft. It might be why it got kicked to the curb. But it's got a nice crimp. It'll be perfect for the self-striping yarn. So that is going to go into the, the light gray as I <laughs> work on this. And then here is the waist. The flicking waist from the flicking waist. And I'm just going to keep working through here, color by color. Here's a nice big blob of some light gray. I am also picking stuff off the floor of the workshop because um, for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe I'm carrying a fleece and pieces drop off. So <laughs> doing that as well. So that's an update on that. So that's my fiber prep work right now. And this easily, I can easily see this enormous pile of fiber seeing me right through till shearing. And as you know, shearing, once shearing is over, I'll probably start ruining actually early April and start getting those fleeces prepared for the sale. And then mid-April, I still have to call Aaron. I got to get that set up. My shearer comes out and he does the balance of the flock, any of the stuff that I'm not going to rue. So this will hold me over till then. Pretty, pretty confident about that. So I wanted to show you some of the skeins that I I was talking about the fiber last week and I actually put the effort in to get them spun so this is still this is a basket of yarn that I still want to wash 
So it's washed wool, but I, you know, you wash and set the skeins after you spin them. This is the yarn I made from Hilder. I talked about her last week. And it's a two ply spun it in a woolen prep. I didn't line the fibers up, so it was very rough and tumble. Spun it from a bat. You can see I left the tips in there. I did try to pick out, there was a good amount of, you know, bits of straw and stuff, so I was picking stuff out as I went. But as I said before, you start working on these things in the beginning and you're like, this is gonna be horrible. Once you spin it and then even knit it, it just turns out to be very nice. I'm looking forward to this. I'm probably gonna knit this into a hat. I don't really have a lot of knitting going on right now because of the kittens. They don't, they play with the yarn and stuff so I can't really knit upstairs, which used to be my knitting area. <laughs> it's okay. And this is the skein, I really like this one a lot. This is the skein from SIF. So these were the two um, projects I had where the fiber was rude off of a lamb fleece. So just really pristine. This is a lot cleaner. This one hardly had any bits of hay or anything in it. And I just love it. And believe it or not, this is all from one U. Our SIF, she's really special. So yeah, so those are the two skeins that I spun up and uh i mean that's 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 pretty much it that's that's going what's going on in the wool cave trying to keep busy trying to make sure i have time down here to work with wool because you know spinning is very cathartic during the winter months and i really enjoy it so so yeah, so the next thing is going to be a slow, you know, it'll be a slow project, but rewarding and it feels good to use up excess material that we once thought was scrap. So I'll keep you posted on progress with the self-striping yarn, even though it's going to be pretty slow. 